Michael, nice to see you. Michael Lafferty. Uh, tell me, tell me a bit about your upbringing. Are you from a musical family? Where were you born? All that stuff. Yes, uh, I am from a musical family. Uh, so I was born in Essex in South End. Um, and my parents aren't professional musicians, but they're, they're very good musicians. And I grew up uh, youngest of five, mm -hmm. uh, who are all musical as well. Um, a lot of different music going on in my house, really. A, a lot of jazz, um, a lot of kind of 60s music. My mom and dad love 60s and 70s music. Um, country and Western, all sorts, really. Um, and we used to kind of sing at the dinner table. My dad plays guitar. Um, uh, actually, they used to play in a band together, my mum and my dad. Oh, wonderful. Um, and yeah, we, we, we play, play all sorts, really. It was, it was lovely. And I, I started playing piano when I was maybe nine or ten, something like mm -hmm. that, before mm -hmm. I started singing. When did, the, when, did you, when did you become aware you'd got a voice and, and quite like using it? I think I was probably about 12 or 13 when mm. my mum suggested to me that I should do some singing lessons. Mm -hmm. My piano teacher at the time was also a singing teacher, uh, Claire Furley, who is based in Essex. Um, yeah, and I had my first lesson, loved it. I can't remember what I sung. <laughs> what did I sing? It's probably some, some folk song or, or something. But yeah, I, I, was, I was hooked, really ever since that first lesson. And then I just kept going with my piano and my singing, uh, did my, my grades, did, did the whole route through, through to grade eight. And um, yeah, but the I singing guess, was, always... it was my mum that got me into it. Yeah, uh, yes, blame her, we'll blame her. Um, yeah. but the, the singing was, was the dominant one. I mean, you obviously were, were and are, I, I guess, a, a good pianist, but you, you always wanted to sing rather than, rather than play. Uh, I think I probably made that distinction when I was about 16, mm. 16 or 17. Yeah. Uh, by that point, I'd been singing with South End Boys Choir quite a long time, which I loved. Mm. Um, but I think it was only maybe three or four years in, um, after my voice broke, yeah. that I thought actually singing is, is what I want to specialise in. Yeah. Um, so how did you yes. start training the voice? Where did you where did you go? I went to Junior Trinity mm. when I was seventeen, so the junior department of Trinity Laban Conservatoire. No. Um, before that point, I'd still been having weekly, sometimes twice a week lessons at my school in um, uh, Southend High School for Boys, mm. where I went to school. Um, but yeah, I think when I was doing my A-levels, the first year of my A-levels, uh, my parents sort of suggested to me that maybe I should go and take even more specialised training for yeah. singing if I was going to be auditioning for conservatoires uh, in the next few years. So that's what I did. And luckily, I went to, to Junior Trinity and had a wonderful time there with Mark Griffiths, was my mm -hmm. teacher. Mm. And now you're at Guildhall. In fact, you're sitting somewhere in Milton Court, which, yeah. which is yeah, exactly. in the Barbican, part of the Guildhall yeah. setup. Um, has, a, has a very splendid concert hall, apart from anything else. Um, uh, um, and how long have you been at Guildhall? And uh, have you, have you, is this your last year? Where are we in your, in your Guildhall career? So at the moment, I'm in my first year of the opera school right. that they have at Guildhall. Uh, which is actually why I'm not sure if you can see, but I've just had a, a, a makeup tutorial, so I hope I don't have too much sort of dark. I had to dress like a a, a clown, put makeup on like a clown for yeah, uh, upcoming scenes. Might, yeah, you look as though you might have had rather a good night last night, if you know what I mean. Really? Oh yeah. no. Okay, I promise <laughs> it's just makeup. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, first year of the opera school. It's a two-year course, so I'll have another year after this one. Um, but it's fantastic. I mean, we're doing. Uh, in the first year, all of my my lot in, yep. in our year yep. were doing scenes. Yes. Um, yep. Instead of the main opera, I think you often cover roles in the main in the main operas sure. that are left in the second year. Uh, but for me this year, I'm doing uh, scenes from War and Peace, Prokofiev. Mm -hmm. um, scenes from Die Tote Stadt, Korngold, which is actually one of the 
I was going uh, to say, you're, you're getting that in. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. It's, a, it's great to be able to work on that in situ, as it were. And also uh, Barbara Seville scene. So really good set of scenes this year for me. Looking forward to it a lot. And they'll be well, at the end of November. Where do you see your career going, Michael? I mean, it's always a slightly naive question in your career will go the way it goes but but where would you where would you like it to go I mean and do you want to do you want to involve you know all three you know the, the operatic field the, the concert field and and the and the the leader the song song recital field yeah ideally that's mm. what I would love um yeah it is a tough one because I think I think ultimately for, for me at the moment I'm I'm trying to as simple as it sounds I'm trying to sing as well as I possibly can and get as much training yeah. at the moment as I possibly can um and then to be able to go and audition here in the UK and and abroad Europe the US would that would be fantastic that would that would be the next steps for me I think once I finish this this last part of my training mm. um which is what opera school I think is generally considered to be it's sort of um, at least in Guildhall, it, seem, it seems to be you, you have an undergraduate, then you have a postgraduate. Then if you really want to specialise in opera, which, which I do, mm. you take the two-year opera course. Um, How would you describe your voice at the moment? How would you describe the way you sound? I mean, you're a baritone? Yes. Yeah. yeah. A lyric baritone? How, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think lyric baritone is right i mean these these scenes i'm doing at the moment and a lot of the repertoire i'm doing for this competition is very very lyrical and, and it's pretty high set mm. um so roles like fritz in the corn gold or, or figaro and barbara seville mm. lots of <clears throat> the the higher set roles are the ones that i'd like to to break into and the ones i'm working at at the moment try and get under my belt well you talked about lyrical you, you're starting in the semis with a pretty lyrical uh Donizetti yes. aria from Pasquale tell us a bit about um Bella Sicome and Angelo famous though sure you? so yeah it's, it's a very very famous baritone aria um from Donizetti's Don Pasquale <laughs> and I'm playing the character of Dr Malatesta mm -hmm. who I guess is kind of like a dodgy car salesman <laughs> um he yeah is in this part is very near the beginning of the opera mm. and he is essentially selling his sister to Don Pasquale in an attempt to sort of weevil his way in to the family to Don Pasquale's family and, and, and all that entails money status um and the, the very first line beautiful like an angel he's he's describing her and so, and before this point, he said, I found you the perfect woman. And Don Pasquale is getting hot under the collar and he, he can hardly contain his excitement. And Dr. Malatesta knows that he's got him in the, in the palm of his hand at this point and just waxes lyrical. Is that the quite right expression? Waxes Absolutely. I mean, I was going to say, about, it's, a, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, about, a very, about, it's a very beautiful, it's a very beautiful melody. It's a very beautiful line, isn't it? It's a very oily line too, I think. It's very oily. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's 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 a paradox, I think, because the music is so beautiful. This lovely D flat major, mm. and then beautiful, beautiful melody soaring. But ultimately, he's he's selling his sister, which is mm. very very slimy, yes, oily, as you say, uh, thing thing to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, and you get the idea that the characters, yeah, dodgy car salesman. Uh, I think you've, kind of you've you've hit it. Vibes yes. I'm channeling. <laughs> so, so from Donizetti to Venables and and Flying yes. Crooked, not a song I know. Tell me about it. Sure. So, Flying Crooked is uh, actually a poem by Robert Graves. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely short poem. I mean, the song itself is maybe only a minute long, something mm -hmm. like that. But it's just about a butterfly, the cabbage white that can't fly straight. <laughs> uh, it's a delightful little poem and it's also kind of saying that um it doesn't it, it doesn't matter that the butterfly can't fly straight because the butterfly doesn't know what's right and what's wrong and if flying right or flying crooked 
is the right way at all. He, he just does what he wants to do. Um, Lovely. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds it's very like simple. A, a, a perfect little bon bouche before we get to Bach. Spot of the Christmas yes. oratorio, I see. Yes. Uh, Großer Herr or starker König. So, great Lord, O oh, strong King. Um, I just love. I love this piece so much. It's 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 got it's got everything. I mean, the the there's it's broken down into two sections, so A and B, and then then returns to the A section. Um, and it's just there's there's a a, a real sense of a triumph in in God's love mm. at the very beginning and, and and admiration at all that He's done for us. Um, Dear die ganze Welt erhält, and you who holds the entire world in your hand, and you'll look after us and you'll comfort us. But it's 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 in a triumphant way. It's it's in a celebratory way. The way the way he uh, talks about God in this aria. Lovely. From from celebration, you go um, to Ivor Gurney and and lights out, which yeah. is hardly celebratory, but wonderful. No, not at all. Um, this is a poem by Edward Thomas, who was killed in 1917. One of the great at the end poets. of the First World War. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess it's it's a, all about the inevitability of death, mm. which sounds very, very gloomy and sort of miserable on the surface. But when you hear the music, there's this sort of peace that descends, a sort of acceptance of the fact that we're all on this path together, no matter how straight or winding, we, we all end up in the same place and, and that's okay. Mm. It's almost nothing to be scared of. And it, 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 yeah, he, he, this person, this figure in the song has to decide between uh, sorrow and love and, and, and joy and all the things that happen in our lives. Um, he has to choose between that and actually finally taking his final destination, which is death. Mm. And he chooses death. He, 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 he has to. And Gurney's, Gurney's settings, are, I think, are always so special because being a poet himself, he kind of has a, almost a second sight with someone else's words. Um, I, I wish Schubert had occasionally set his own poetry that would have been a fascinating thing yeah, but you're, end really you're ending with you see what i've done there you you we are ending with two <laughs> Hubert songs uh exactly. in yep. and yep. Zone. just a very quick pinpoint description of the two of them sure so im Heine actually leads quite well on from from the gurney mm. uh, it means in the woods and it's considerably more musically speaking positive and it's, it's in a major key for starters and, and everything is just, everything opens and it's all about the sunlight beaming through the trees and how this sunlight takes away all pain yes. that this person has felt in their life and leaves with them just this pure peace that inhabits their heart so again that, that death element is very strong sure. in this schubert setting well no surprises there i guess but it's in a, in a very different way to the gurney, it, it's very bright and melodious and happy. Mm. Good contrast. Way, but, uh, yeah, Good it, contrast, it's a, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, but they, they are ultimately talking about the same topic, the ultimate piece of death. Musenzorn is not so sad. <laughs> not so sad at all. That's a, a famous Schubert piece. Um, Goethe is a poet for this. And it's the, the muse's son and it, the, the intro is unmistakable. And as soon as I hear it, I, it makes me excited. As soon as I first, kind of, I hesitate to say the word plonky. I don't think my <laughs> <laughs> teachers would agree with me there, but it's, a, it's, it's, like you're, it's like you're, like you're on, a, on, a, on a horse riding yes. through a forest, yeah. right? Or it may, may, maybe so much of a horse as a little donkey or something. <laughs> um, but I love it, and it's uh, kind of this character is sort of a Pied Piper. Great. Um, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a lovely little um, vignette, and there, so we've got Donizetti, Venables, Bach, Gurney, and Schubert in your semi final. And for your final, you start again with Schubert, Auf der Brücke. Yeah. 
exactly uh another schubert piece uh on it means at uh at brook which is a, a town in germany but also on the bridge on the bridge in brook bridge, yeah. exactly yeah um and again this introduct this piano introduction is just unmistakable and there's so much fire and energy um schubert does good piano played... introductions doesn't he he really does he's brilliant. oh brilliant brilliant <laughs> Um, which will be played wonderfully by uh, Ashley Beecham, who's, who's playing for me in, in these competitions. Um, and it's fantastic. It's, again, another sort of on a horseback type of, type of song, travelling through the forest. Um, and his, he, he sees how his life wants, how he wants his life to unfold and all the excitements and joy that lies before him. Samuel Barber is a composer I, I, I really rate, and um, I, I don't know, however, A Green Lowland of Pianos. It's a great title. Tell me about The Green it's Lowland great. of Pianos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this, um, I'm going to embarrass myself now by trying to pronounce the name of the Polish poet who, oh. who, who originally wrote this. I think Milosz. I'm sure someone will, someone, someone I'll, will correct I'll me. I'll check it that, out but, before um, we do this uh, on next week. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's um, oh, it's fantastic. It's the second in a group of three songs mm. by Barber. It's all about grand pianos mm. that this person is pretend or pretending or depicting that they're that they're cows in a field <laughs> and they're drinking and they're they're making Actually, surreal. Yeah. they're making fuss at a concert and uh, it has this dreamlike quality. The, it's lilting and it's swaying and it's almost like like a little like a dance well, well, but the, the topic is just utterly utterly ridiculous almost nonsensical but it, it's just uh, kind of one of those dreams that yeah. really makes sense at the time then you think about it you know what on earth was that well from something very um, su something very surreal yeah. to something very real because you now go to your two operatic uh, excerpts, which uh, one of which is from Onyegin, Tchaikovsky, and then into the Corn Gold. Uh, just, just place us in the, uh, where we are in Onyegin for the aria. Sure, this is uh, Onyegin's, Onyegin's Act One aria. Yes. And he has just received a letter from Tatiana. Yes. Which in it, she's confessed her love for him. And he's gone to see her in the garden some some days later maybe mm -hmm. to tell her that actually thank you but no thank you yeah in in, in simple terms he, he said marriage for us would be miserable and i'm he's almost he's yeah he's a complex character i thought you need to work out whether he's uh arrogant and he's saying oh thank you so much for your love letter that's so lovely of you but no thanks or he, he genuine, genuine, um, genuinely cares about Tatiana and really doesn't want to upset her and tries to let her down mm. gently um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to hear how you approach that I mean as you exactly, said yeah. act, it's act one of Onyegin and I mean that you know I, I think he does have a bit of um, you know youthful arrogance and he's got money and he's kind of bored with life and he's kind of you know, he's a bit of a Don Giovanni in a sense. He doesn't know doesn't know what he yeah. wants. You know. Yeah, there are definitely similar similarities between the characters at that point. And of course, Onyegin yeah works it all out finally when it's too late. But anyway, that'll be lovely. And exactly. then and and then to to the piece you 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 know well because you're involved with them. That's Die Torte Stadt, the Corn Gold. Just yeah, tell us a bit exactly. about the famous Mein Zane and Mein Wien. And... So th this comes at the end of. Uh, what I like to think is as, as a nightmare sequence <laughs> in in Paul's head. It's it's all a big. So there's a big scene preceding this aria, which I'm actually doing at the moment at, at Guildhall, which is oh, fantastic. It? It's really privileged yeah. to be doing that. Um, and all of Paul's anxieties and 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 his jealous attribute, jealous um, attributes, and all his kind of nasty characteristics come to the fore in a way that in a nightmare that you can't hide from your subconscious. Mm -hmm. um, so Marietta, 
has just asked Fritz or the Pierrot, who, who was a clown, yeah. which is why I have maybe sort of traces of makeup oh. underneath my eyes. <laughs> um, he's just asked him to sing a song, sing a song. They've just come from a rehearsal in the opera. They've just come from a rehearsal from Robert uh, Le Diable. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they're all very merry, and they've just come in on boats. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone loves Marietta, including Fritz. He's, he's mad about her. And so, of course, when she asked him to sing a song, a nicht zu heiter, nicht zu traurig Stück, a not too bright, not too sad piece, Marietta says to him. Yeah. Um, he, he happily obliges and says, yeah, well, of course I will. I'll, I'll obey your every command, my queen. He says, mein Sinn, mein Wernen, my, my longings, my false imaginings or, or mm -hmm. dreams uh, <laughs> it takes me back mm. yes. to a love he, he had and lost and and then finally a little bit of a little bit of light-hearted Shakespeare from Mr Finzi yes just to finish yep this is it was a lover in his lass mm. which is originally a Shakespeare text from as you like it mm. uh, it's a very famous Finzi setting. It's one of the most famous from uh, Let Us Garland's Bring. And it's all about young lovers enjoying their time as young lovers. How should I put that? Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, and there's a lot of nonsense words in there with, with a hey and a ho and a hey and no, which... Yeah. you know you make make your own my own mind up exactly. about those exactly but like uh, your own words. Yeah. it's all about the joy joy of young love in the springtime splendid what a, what a, what a good way to end i think that's that's there's there's two lovely programs michael and uh, i look forward to uh, to hearing you sing them next week um thank so you very much yeah i'll i'll see